Welcome back guys. In the last video, I left off where I was gonna talk about pricing for the bracket, but I'm still waiting to get a quote on it. But I just wanna show you guys real quick. So, e-brake is finally working properly. Yeah. So, rip it, and then it already engages. Um, I'm, still gonna, I'm still gonna drive it and show you guys the angle uh, at where I'm parked at, and then I can pull the e-brake in it, and it keeps the car in place. So the bracket is done, the specs are done on it. I'm just getting a quote for the bracket itself and for the kit, I'm actually gonna be including the backing plate that I said in my other video, I said you would have to cut out and die grind. Uh, to make things a lot simpler, I'm just gonna get a bunch of the back OEM backing plates, have them laser cut instead of you guys doing that. And then I will bolt on the backing plate to the bracket. So all you guys have to do is when you get your Evo 9, knuckle or if you you could still use this on the four lug just press out your hub take your old brake assembly off the four bolts that hold it onto the trailing arm and bolt this one on and push press back in your hub and then do the modifications to the e-brake line i'll throw in a few clips after this of how i did that and i'll take off a wheel so you guys can see how i adjusted the brake uh, the brake pad shoes so um, everything works out perfectly I love it and I will uh, once I get the quote for all that uh, I'm working on a site so I can sell everything on there so you guys have direct access to it but for today's video we're gonna be doing this clutch clutch ma uh, Willwood clutch master install so the issue I was having was the old Evo and DSM Clutch Masters are 5 8 bore, and in my case, I'm running a Clutch Master Stage 3 clutch, and the pressure plate on there is pretty heavy, I think. And after a while of driving it, it starts to get soft on me, and engaging is really notchy, and I don't really like it. So, before I blow up my uh, rebuilt tranny, I'm gonna be installing this guy. And the solution that Super Guys, 240s, and 350z guys have done is uh, I think you you probably have seen this Siki makes one for all those cars but nobody has made one for the Evo platform early Evo platforms and Mirages so what I will be doing is these two holes bolt up to the original firewall location and then these two counter sinks are for the clutch master so that thing goes on there and then I'll show you guys how I rendered this just for the dimensions and then uh, once I, I'll actually drive the car with this on there because anyone who's done this install, no one's uh, reviewed it and actually driven it and showed the results. So I'm going to do that and then I'll have these CNC laser cut. I'll make a batch and put those also on the site. And the second item is this AEM fuel pressure regulator. I got it off a of MA Performance, I believe 190 bucks shipped. So it's going to be taking place of this little 2G OEM regulator with this pretty thing. So I'll be putting it somewhere in here and this should help, well it's gonna help uh, regulate the pressure obviously, but a lot better than that guy would um, since I'm running the bigger injectors and hopefully it'll take away some more of that oscillation sound that the radium engineering uh, FPD already did. But that combined with that, with the FPD should make it a pretty solid uh, fuel system. And, I'll, and after that, all I have to do is wire up the rear wire kit, and that's my whole fuel system. I'm also running the AEM 320 uh, fuel pump in this thing. So let's get to it. Here we have the Evo 3 5 8 bore master cylinder against the Willwood one. What I wanna show you guys was you can use your original uh, engagement rod inside the clutch masters. All you have to do is um, take it out with the C-clip here and it's the, the very same size. So you just take this C-clip out, take this pin out, uh, this, this rod, and then put that rod into there. And what I did was I made a little coupling nut that can help extend this pedal, just so it help extend the pedal up inside your car wherever you want to adjust it to. But you can still keep the OEM one if you wanted to, or you can buy a new clevis nut to adjust 
for the different thread type on the wood wood if you don't want to change that or if you don't have this at all so those are the two options you can do but the reason why I'm thinking you, you I'm saying you're gonna probably need a little extension is because the thickness of the plate the adapter plate is quarter of an inch so you're pushing back this engagement point back and inside the car means that the actual um, clutch pedal is sitting in quarter of an inch more so with the with the, any kind of nut coupling you do whether on the OEM one or on the new thread it'll help um, compensate that little difference on the other cars I've seen that they don't really they don't need this but in my case I think we're gonna need it so I'm gonna go ahead and use the OEM one and then if that doesn't really work then I'll go to the new Clevis pin, or Clevis nut that I got with this little extender guy so this is essentially the same thing here as you can see Let me show you guys. so OEM and then the new Clevis or the one that would go to the new Clevis nut but uh, I'll switch those out So same rod, it's just a uh, different thread, that's all it is, so you can see the differences. So just a little bit longer like I said. So this new one, I'm going here with the C-clip. Alright, so there's the new one. like that so new rod and the vacuum plate I'm actually gonna spray paint this before I put it on so it doesn't rust even though it's a prototype I'm gonna take it off but for right now I'm gonna paint it so I ran into a little issue before I can paint it I'm actually gonna tie this down tighten it down the oh it's not an issue I ran into but I was anticipating it being a little tight right here because that's just the original bolt pattern I can't really do anything about that without doing an even more custom plate so I'm gonna tighten this down and see how it fits brackets bolted on and when you flip it around so this is gonna be bolted to the firewall this one is the one that's really close so obviously this one doesn't matter, but this is the one that matters, so I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. I've got the plate into position, so everything clear, still in the throttle body, and so that nut's fine, that stud is fine, but it is, let's see if I can get up there, look, it is that stud right there, so I'm going to see how I can wiggle this around and see if we can tighten it down. There is an issue. So that hole that I was telling you guys would hit, or is currently hitting, not the hole, the actual the locking nut is hitting. So what I'm going to do is uh, notch out just a little bit probably one eighth by one eighth uh, cut into here so the nut can actually thread onto there. I feel pretty comfortable doing all this because it's cast steel uh, and I don't see any damage to this. So the only other option to do this conversion would be to do the tilt inversion but they have the same center line here so I'd have to see how they have their base plate uh, how that's molded so I'm gonna do it just because this is mine and uh, uh, yeah so I'm gonna do that and we'll go from there here's my solution I gave it a quick little notch it looks like it's 40 a uh, quarter inch by a quarter inch so I'll put it back on and we'll see how it goes so this is is doable 
but you're gonna need to notch the master so you can get this nut on there. So I made it big enough so I can actually get this ratchet on there. And this is quarter drive for a 13 mil nut. So it's doable. Now the question is, can you guys all cut it when you guys get the plate? Oh, you guys can get the plate. The plate's gonna work. But you guys are gonna have to cut into the to the clutch master. And I also couldn't use um, the hole I drilled out because this car was automatic originally. Well, I think I drilled out one and three eighths. Should have been one and a half with the Willwood uh, cover would have worked well with that. But I have a smaller hole, so I just use the OEM uh, little cover I have, which is fine with me. But just keep that in mind that this might be a little tight inside the firewall hole. And you can use the original one if you want. Or die grind it out and make it big. Nope. I'm pretty sure that, well, it's the same clutch master for the right hand drive cars. So the bolt pattern is going to be the same. There it is. It's installed. This angle. Here's another angle of it installed. I'm sure that backing plate uh, bolt pattern is the same for right hand drive because the clutch master is the same part number. Now I just got to install this 90 and lead the system. See how it goes. Now we're underneath the car or inside the car. What I want to show you guys was, so there's the rod coming through and the hole I made, like I said, my car was an automatic before and then I converted it to a manual. Um, I made the hole too small. I made it one and three eighths and your guys' hole should probably be about 1.5 inch uh, diameter and that'll allow you to run the Willwood um, rubber boot, but I just used the OEM one, which is fine with me. So you can see it goes through and then the shift linkage or the clutch linkage will be there so you gotta thread this guy on there and see how it goes and then we'll bleed it i'll do a bleed by itself on the master and then i'll hook up the line and bleed that clutch master is finally installed set the clutch pedal equal to the brake pedal and two things with this conversion so one it did feel amazing when I put it into gear because it just felt um, like the shifts were really smooth and solid. But the second thing is because it's so firm, after about 15 minutes of driving, my foot started to hurt. And that's a lot. Like you'll, you'll notice the difference if you do it, if you want to do it. But I would recommend not to. So the whole point was to see if this bigger bore clutch master would help with the fatigue after about 45 minutes of driving so this that leads me to the second point it didn't reason being is I kind of already I've eliminated mostly everything I could think of when it comes to the clutch because when I did the clutch everything was brand new fork uh, slave master everything was brand new so the only difference that that's from the old setup to this one is the issue I had with Fadonza, the new flywheel. So this is my old clutch, Clutch Master Stage 3. Same clutch, same flywheel. This clutch, I was still not even worn out, but I was able, with this one I drove to Vegas, Los Angeles, Malibu, Newport, for I drive for hours and no issues at all, I loved it. The new Fadonza flywheel, had that green coating, I'll put a picture in. So the clutch 
was actually made it to it before the car even started and that's when I started breaking down uh, all the points where uh, things can go wrong so I, like I said I dropped the trans pop or I had to pry it off and then that's when in the picture you'll see that on the new clutch the that friction coating merge onto this this Kevlar part of the of the clutch but what I did was I cleaned all this off on the new one and then I reinstalled it but the clutch still had some remnants of it on here so the only thing now since every since I've gone through every point I'm thinking the um, I'm thinking the clutch still has some of that green stuff that after when it heats up it actually is preventing me from engaging the clutch um, that's the only that's the only thing it feels like like I said it felt like I lost pressure but in the mornings like for the first 30 minutes even when it's cold it runs really well so I know it's you're driving it while it's up to temperature but for some reason after 30 45 minutes it just it goes to crap so what I'll do now is I have 400 miles on the new car break-in period so I'm gonna drive another hundred I'm gonna put back the stock one just so I can drive it those extra 90 miles that I need to uh, break in the car properly since I'm gonna change out the trans fluid and all the fluids and everything before it goes to get tuned I'm gonna take everything apart go to clutch masters they're out in uh, Fontana and I'm gonna say hey can you simulate the clutch being heated up to operating temperature and engage it and disengage it see if it's see if it's their pressure plate this is the old one see if it's the new pressure plate that is giving out when I've been driving it for so long or is it the material or is it the green coating on the new uh, clutch you know uh, I don't think it's the flywheel anymore because like I said I took everything off of it so next thing uh, let's get into the regulator because this thing kind of bummed me out so Gotta keep pushing forward, but uh, we'll do something else. Before I go back to the stock clutch master, I wanna show you guys. So, see that? It's it's pretty hard to, to show you guys, but it's heavy, but it goes into gear really easy. So, it works, it works. So, here is the, that's first gear, and if I want to go reverse, see, so it works, but after a while you're going to feel, you're going to feel that extra volume on your foot. Oh, show you guys what comes in the MA performance kit. So it's the AM regulator with the pressure gauge. And then you have a cap for the for one side and your 90 for 90 and the fitting for the fuel rail and that goes on the inlet side of this guy and then on the bottom port is for your return hose this is quarter inch i believe and this is three eighths hose this is going from the fuel rail to your pressure regulator and this one just connects to your bottom um fuel return line and then i think the set pressure is 43 so the only thing I noticed was this doesn't have a little washer to stop the nut, but I'll mess with it and see what uh, see what happens. Before we install this guy, it's time to add another race sticker to the helmet. So I think this gives you about five horsepower when you install it. Thinking right here. It's been a few days since I installed the three-quarter Willwood Master and after, like I explained earlier, um, you have to notch the, this part out in order for it to work. Now this is the three-quarter inch Clutch Master, but as you can see there's another one in there. Now that one is a five-eighths Clutch Master. And the reason why I did that was um, 
this was the pedal is too heavy on this so I went with the 5 8 which is kind of kind of counterintuitive to why I replaced the OEM unit at all so I made the bracket and this this master as well has to get notched out right here in order for it to work so I just wanted something more robust than the OEM unit so this one will work um, I'm still gonna make the plates and I'll put it on there if you want to do this you're gonna have to notch this out just by just notch it out a little bit just to clear that bolt like I said and it'll be super easy but my real issue is the transmission has to come out again after going back and forth with Fidanza and seeing what the issue was um, let's see so most DSMs uh, once you put when you put the transmission on you have to check your step height on your flywheel all of that was done but when I put it on the fork looked like it was in the basically in the center so I didn't really think I had to do the little shim on the on the ball but when uh, the issue is like I said before after about 30 minutes of driving the um, uh, the, cl the pressure plate or the clutch is locking me out and it feels like it's kicking me out of the first gear uh, so I was like what the heck so when the issue when I had the issue really bad just recently like two days ago um, once I pulled it in I picked up the card and I had them push on the clutch and on the clutch pedal and then as soon as it went up to about here it started hitting the inside of the um, the housing on the transmission so what that means is drop the trans and shim it and I'll also double check I'll send the pressure plate and clutch the clutch masters just to make sure everything's working properly but trans has to come out again for the third time but that's how you learn how to diagnose issues and uh, fortunate it happened but we'll get it done Trans is finally out. I have a, for all you think I don't have a JDM transmission, this is a W5M332UPWE and it's been stamped by Tim Zimmer, uh, TMZ Performance. So this is a uh, EVO 3 front LSD transmission. With that, with that you need this extended axle end. This took me about a year and a half to find, and I finally did. But, anyways, the issue is right here. So what we're gonna do is, all this is gonna re replace, and then we're gonna shim the ball out. So I taped it to show, to see where the engagement point was of the current setup. So I'll probably throw in some washers to move it this way. And that should offset the whole fork this way. And we should be good to go. Wanted to show you guys the difference as to what the shimming the, the ball on the on these transmissions does. So here's the the fork and the throw out bearing without the washer. So as you can see it already started fairly close, which is okay, but in my in my situation uh, it doesn't really work so here's where it starts to hit and the bearing throw bearing is basically flush with the input shaft right here uh, now um, I think after I drove it when it would warm up and after continuous flexing of the pressure plate that little bit of give that would normally be adjusted by the slave um, I couldn't my my transmission couldn't do it because it already was hitting here now everything was brand new, so I don't know what to do in that case, and the step height on the flywheel was correct, but everything will be get double checked, so let me show you guys the difference when you add that washer.
So you're supposed to do this with, with it in the car after you throw the washer in. So this washer is actually a ARP head stud washer and they come in at about three millimeters. So that sets the engagement point further out that much. I think this one will work. So now, so with that in there now, so just, so right there where it hits, this thing is already out. Let's see how much I gained. I would say I gained about, I pushed it back a little bit. Let me see. If that's where it hits, push it back just a little bit. So about seven millimeters more this way, which is, for a US customary standards, about a quarter of an inch more. So you can already see it, that it sits. So it should sit, should ride on the clutch just about there. You don't want to push it too far out and have this um, where it doesn't move at all. So I think that little washer will be sufficient. But like I said, we'll put it, we'll put it up with the new parts, and then it should be close to center, if not a little bit over to the driver's side. So once it does start engage, I get plenty of throw in the fork and the pressure plate and the clutch will work properly. So there it is. I think that's the solution to my issue. Pressure plate and clutch are out and my diagnosis was correct. So on the pressure plate side, you can see proper engagement on the whole clutch. But on the flywheel side, only the outermost side of the clutch got engaged and towards the center here, none of, it, none of it was making contact. And you can see that on the flywheel as well, and only the outside. So that means the clutch was being properly disengaged and engaged. So I'm going to still go get it checked out, but I'm pretty sure that it was because of the um, the fork hitting and not applying enough pressure to the center puck or the center part of the clutch and disengaging it. So, uh, but for now, since I can't do anything here, I'll finish off the fuel pressure regulator somewhere over there, and that'll be it for this video. First step to this kit is removing your old regulator and putting the supplied flange. Now, the only issue I saw was that the supplied 90-6 line that they give you, um, once it's on there, it's gonna be hitting the valve cover. Actually, let me turn it. It'd be something like that. So that's definitely gonna hit there. Uh, I'm not sure if you have to notch this, or you should have another valve cover, but valve cover, cam cover. But luckily I had this tight 90 that I will be able to throw on there and it should barely miss it. If anything, it's just gonna be wedging up against it. I can just die grind it out. But, um, so that's the first step. I had to grind this down a little bit and give it a little bit of a taper so it can fit with the fitting. So there's my 90 with the straight on there. So that clears it right there. And here's the regulator. So I'll probably mount it somewhere in there. There's, there's no holes there, but I'll do a, um, uh, what do you call it? A uh, pop rivet, a rivet nut in here. So I'll mount it something like that. And then I'll just run my hose from there to the regulator. And then the bottom side is just the return. That's just a quarter inch hose. Sorry for the delay guys, it's been about a month. Uh, rainy weather in California and I don't really have a lot of days off on the weekends to work on this. But today's a sunny day and I wanna get this done. So what I did was uh, I made this bracket. It was offset by a quarter of an inch on one of the sides so I can mount it to the firewall 
here I'm doing some pop rivets and I did the offset because the firewall goes back about a quarter inch the difference so pop that in there and it'll go in there like that so I made this really quick on SolidWorks and then I had my buddy make it real quick so what I didn't show was the return line came with the push lock fitting and then here's the quick 90 that I had that I was able to put on there and I had to trim some of this off so I'm gonna go ahead and install this set the pressure and after that should be able to drive it fuel pressure regulator installed I have it set for 43 psi and after I started and ran it for a little bit it was still doing the oscillation noise coming from here I thought I was gonna get rid of it entirely but it didn't so at this point I'm just gonna leave it up to my tuner with the new computer to see what he says um, but I really wanted to put on put that on there so he had some adjustability now now that that's taken care of the next thing was I think the few clips before I left off on the clutch so with the fork with the washer on the fork fork ball I was able to get the get it to work properly now and or the shifting to work properly so I'm gonna take it out for a test drive and let you guys see that before I couldn't uh, before I couldn't it was kicking me out of gear or well, not kicking me out of gear but um, I couldn't go straight to first or any really any gear without it feeling like I was hitting a wall so with that fork pushed towards the clutch now I'm able uh, to put it into any gear I want and before I would net I could never just go straight to reverse in uh, with the um, with the car on it would literally feel like it was dragging on the synchros but now I can go into any of the gears I want with no problem so here I'll start it up real quick let you guys check it out it's a weird feeling so oh, yeah it's dying a little bit anyway so clutch is in boom first gear oh it died all right let's try this again so is in first gear no problem I can go to reverse no problem put in first gear rev it up car isn't moving and then once I let it go a little bit it starts to move see so normally I could never do that without it uh, feeling like I'm hitting a wall so we're not go straight to reverse that's pretty gnarly for me and see, back if I want to go back to forward, there you go, first gear, no problem. So I'm going to drive it for a little bit and uh, uh, hope just work out some of the idling issues. Now once that's done, I'm going to put another, the last 100 miles before I go get it tuned on the new computer because that one is no good. So let's take it out for a little drive and see how it feels. but right now it looks like it's okay at 900 but uh, still got to do a boost leak and check everything else out but there it is goes in reverse go back to first no problem so uh, let's take a look at it from the outside
as you guys can hear, the car sounds really good. Uh, reason being is I took off the aftermarket pressure regulator. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm putting in the driving clip before or after this, but I already filmed this outro, but the only thing that was bugging me was I was still getting a loud oscillation click from the, uh, or noise from the fuel pressure regulator. So I put the stock unit in and I will let uh, Road Race worry about it when they install the AM to see if they need it at all. But other than that, I'll show you guys. It looks boring with the stock pressure regulator, but it's doing its job. There are the uh, nut certs that I installed. But the other update I had was um, I finally got pricing on the single piece CNC bracket for the rear Woolwood brakes. It's gonna be very expensive, like 650 bucks expensive for a kit, or that's just the, the brackets and you still need to buy your rear calipers, your rotors, and also your e-brake assembly. So um, I can definitely still do it. I'm gonna do it how I currently have it, which works on my car, which is the laser cut pieces um, welded with the nut certs. And uh, I'll price that out. So. Cause I'm building a website and I'll have that on there and I'm going to double check the clutch master right now, the plate. So I'm going to play with that and see if it's even worth it. Because, um, like I said earlier, my issue with the clutch engagement was the washer on the fulcrum of the fork. So I spaced that out and it worked really, it works really well now. So next video, I will be driving it cause I'm going to put another hundred miles on this car, on the current car because of the, uh, braking period as well as I need to drop the trans to clean off the clutch again or clean it off because they tested it at clutch masters and there's a bunch of debris that I guess I didn't catch and now the car vibrates when it goes into first gear so that's the easiest to do and then I'll change all my fluids out and it's off to road race so I can tune it for Mitsubishi Owners Day 2019 and enjoy the car for the summer so if you made it to the end thanks for watching and tune in for the next video